place. We're just about to arrive at our hotel for the evening. I've just travelled five hours uh, the day before we're due to film because unfortunately we've reduced daylight. I have to come the day before, stop somewhere, and then we've got a full day tomorrow morning. The problem is right now is the forecast for tomorrow is not looking good at all. So I'm really worried that we've made a five hour journey that will be completely wasted. Anyway, let's stay positive. I'm gonna get checked into the hotel, get something to eat, get a good night's sleep, wake up tomorrow morning, fingers crossed, we've got something to work with and this isn't a wasted trip. Right, so I have just woken up, it's just gone seven, and uh, the forecast on my phone is suggesting fog at the golf course for the next couple of hours, but I've got to tell you, last night it was suggesting it was for most of the day. You'll also see around 10 o'clock we should be getting some sunshine, so that's first of all the good news. The second bit of news is I can't see any fog right now at quarter past seven, so I'm really hopeful we could be in for a really good day on the links. But that optimism was short-lived and having just driven one mile, the fog was not a welcome sight. Like with so many golfers, this time of year can be a real struggle. And if you're trying to make a living from making videos about golf in the winter, well, that struggle is real. Deciding to take up my travel content again at the start of the winter perhaps wasn't the best idea, but it's provided me with some real motivation to keep on getting out there. Well, the good news is the fog has lifted a little bit from uh, of that drive was worrying to say the least. It's still a little bit overcast, don't get me wrong, but we're gonna kick off on the first tee, which is just behind me. It's, uh, all I can tell you, is absolutely Baltic right now. Uh, but we're very positive because it looks like we're gonna play some golf, and more importantly, get some filming done. Kick up. Go on, go on. It's not a bad effort. A par is a par. A little bit unconventional, but uh, what a start. I can't tell you how good this place is. We're just literally, uh, I'm only paid three holes, but I'm just looking around me, incredible. Condition is unbelievable as well, as is the pace of the greens.
I can't tell you how good of an up and down I was. At the back of the green, I had no shot whatsoever, and uh, to get it within three foot and then roll in a putt, I'm doing okay, you know. Oh, do you know what? I genuinely need to thank you a lot because there's no way, first of all, I would have travelled up yesterday based on a forecast. And it's probably unlikely I'd have even got out of bed this morning based on last night's forecast. And without having to do these uh, videos, these short films, then uh, I just wouldn't have got out and played and just look what we would have missed out on. And this course, let me tell you, it's something special, you know, far greater than I expected. to capture that I'll be delighted it's probably the best iron shot of it all day this has still got a fair old swing in it but I'd love to make birdie after that iron shot come on turn 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 yes get in I just hope you've got that iron shot on camera I've just got to stop and say well done to Trace behind the camera because we've just had a little watch back. It's some of the best camera work I've ever seen. She's done an amazing job. And I think it's uh, an apt moment to run the photo competition. And don't forget, it's either Tracy or Andy in the comment section down below. And as you can see from some of those photos, the fog lifted and the sun cast a near perfect light over the links at Gossick. The James Braid design is an open qualifying venue situated on the northeast of England. And as you can see, is a landscape that provides a truly authentic links experience. As incredible as Gossip might be, they have no desire to rest on their laurels. A new phase of improvement is underway with the help of the renowned course designers Mackenzie and Ebert. I look forward to witnessing this exciting phase for the club and its future. So whilst we admire the beauty of Gossip, I'd just like to reflect on the feedback from all of you on a recent change in content type. It has been overwhelming and apart from the fact that I am genuinely grateful for all those comments and also relieved that you approved this change. It also encouraged me to get out there when it's easier not to. There's a huge effort required to film these episodes and doing so in two or three degrees C is even more challenging. But do not underestimate the value of your comments and how they inspire me and my wife to continue through this period. And I hope in some way inspire and motivate others to keep getting out there.
So the stretch really from the 10th, but in particular 12 really great hole and uh, now 13. Playing off the mat's quite a long way forward. The tee boxes from further back must be pretty special in full conditions. I'm still playing 170 to what is a back pin. Classic Lynx par three. And in this light just looks absolutely stunning. The question is, what iron are you gonna play on? That's such a clever design though, isn't it? I mean, where do you go? Where is the miss? Them bunkers left are uh, wanting my ball. We're going six iron, come on. Hopefully you've got the ball flight. Yeah, bit cautious. Hopefully the back camera picked it up. We're on the front side of the green. It was like a three quarter six iron and definitely should have given it a little bit more to be honest with you. But what a little par three. We stayed in the nearby Marshall Meadows Manor House. The Georgian house sat in an elevated position, providing some stunning sea views. The room was excellent and the food was superb, especially the breakfast, which was one of the best starts of the day I'd had for some time. I also noticed they had some luxury pods in the ground for something a little bit different. The hotel was just a 15 minute drive from Gossick. Hi, 15th. Another stunning par three. We're only playing 120 down into the uh, basin. That's not a bad backdrop though, is it? Well, since it's in a basin, it's got like two bunkers left, bunkers right. I'm gonna go with a wedge, but I've got a bit of wind, so I want it like a half a shot and try and use the back part of the green as some form of backstop. It sounds like I know what I'm on about. Right, I'm going to leave it there before we get to the closing holes, which will ultimately be in pretty much darkness. The sun is going down, an incredible back nine. The sun and the light was amazing. I didn't film or talk as much as I would have normally done because we had a few games behind us, but uh, oh, what a place. I just cannot tell you how good Gothic is as a golf club, as a golf course. And quite honestly, it's probably gone right into my top 10 without doubt of courses I've ever played. Love the place. Uh, I wouldn't say it's underrated, but I've certainly not uh, expected it to be just as good as it was. And I've got to thank you a lot, like I said, for getting me out here. I'll see you next week.